Hello and welcome all. In this video, we're going to be making a very basic game in Scratch. This video assumes zero prior knowledge to anything programming related or Scratch related in general. So I assure you this is a very beginner friendly course. This is going to teach you all the basics of Scratch, get your foot off of the ground so after this you'll be able to be creating your very own Scratch games. So this is how the video game is going to look once you're done with the video. So now that we got all that out of the way, let's get started. So to get started, we're going to see um, our Scratch, well, our Scratch app. Um, so if you're using the online version or the, the program, it should look relatively the same. On our left, we have all of our code blocks. So each of these code blocks um, have um, specific things about them. This has to do with motion. These have to do with the look of the sprite and so on. Um, and then to the left, we have two more tabs. We have the costume tab, and this is the current costume that our sprite is um, holding. So these are called sprites, and they can have different costumes. And then there's also the sound where um, we use this tab to go ahead and um, add sounds to our game and characters. So we'll go back here. And right here in the middle, we have our coding area. So if we drag anything from the code blocks and bring it here, and you'll notice you can bring the code here. It can go here, and if you bring it here, that's dragging it out. You can zoom in and out if you want to look, and if you have like a lot of code, zooming in and out would be very useful. Um, right now, uh, we'll just zoom in. And then here to the right, we have our playing area. So you can have it in this view, in this view, which is the regular view, and you can also have it in full screen mode. And then here at the bottom right, we have our sprite's name, its position, its direction it's facing, its size, and then we can make it visible or not visible. And then here is our sprite. So any kind of sprite that we have is going to be located right here. And then we have our backdrops right here, which is the background image. So now that we have that, um, all the, the layout of Scratch figured out, we can go ahead and test out some code. So if we press on this block right here, we'll notice that it actually moves 10 steps. So if you want to test out any kind of code right here, all you have to do is press it. So I'm going to go ahead and reset the um, Scratch Cat's values and remove this. So now we're going to go over uploading a sprite. So to upload a sprite, you have to hover over this choose a sprite image and click on this upload sprite. And we're going to upload this Octo player right here. So we notice that it's more than just one sprite. And we're going to go ahead and edit it in a second. But first, we're going to change its size to 60. Now we're going to go into the costumes. And like, I, like we've noticed before, um, our sprite can have more than one costume. So if we go ahead and select this, select the top left, make sure to not get anything from the other characters. So just select that. And then you can zoom in and out by holding control and scrolling the, um, the mouse wheel. If you don't have a mouse wheel, then you can um, use this right here. Go ahead and control X and then paint and then control V. So we have our costume right here, and we're going to drag it right here into the middle. So this is costume one. So we're going to go ahead and do that for the rest of the five images, as this is going to be um, the octopus's animation. So let's go ahead and paint another one. Bring it here. Um, paint another one. Control X this. Um, Control V. And make sure that they're all um, centered in the middle, as that is very important. If you make a mistake like um, like cutting it off, um, you kind of have to upload the costume again. And then basically go ahead and just select it. And yeah, Control X. Huh, seems like... Oh, let me just do this. Okay, perfect. And then you can go ahead and delete this and control V. So now I'm going to speed past the rest of this. Let 
and that's the final costume and then we can go ahead and delete this original octo player and we're going to use costume one as our base um octopus and that's what we're going to be using for um the beginning of this video we can go ahead and delete this cat sprite as we don't need it anymore and go ahead and start working on some code so the first thing we're going to do is go into the events and we're going to drag in this when flag is clicked so what this block right here does is um it will do whatever is under it whenever the flag is clicked. For example, if we grab a go to block and we select um, zero, zero, and then when the flag is clicked, it will go to the center of the screen. So if you if you if you don't know anything about um, vectors and x and y's, basically x is um the center of the screen is zero zero x is for left and right and then y is for up and down so that's basically all that is um and we want the starting point for our character to be the x to be zero and the y to be negative 137. this is where our player is going to start off at the beginning of their game and another thing you might notice well we'll, we'll go over that a bit later so you can understand we're going to bring in a forever loop. So when the flag is clicked, forever, whatever is inside this forever loop is going to happen forever. Um, and let's bring in two if statements. Well, just one for now. And we're going to bring in a sensing. We're going to say if um, and then grab the key and then use the A. And then we're going to say move three steps so let me slow down a bit basically when when flag is clicked and when we hold down a we're going to be moving three steps um, we can go ahead and duplicate this if statement by right clicking and duplicating it and changing the a to d so now we're going to move left and right with a and d you can go ahead and change that if you would like to left arrow and right arrow so now if we click flag we're moving and you notice that we're not moving left and right we're just moving left i mean right so if you want to go ahead and change that we're going to use the point in direction so right here we have a pointed direction and this will make our character go left if we grab another one right here now we have our character pointing right and then have it pointing left so Let's put these on top so it points in that direction before moving and then click on the flag. So when it moves, when you click on D, it moves right. And then when you click A, it moves left. But something that you do notice is that it's flipping over a bit weird. And if that's something you want, then that's something you want. But in this case, I don't think it's a good idea. So what we're going to do is we have something right here in the motion block called set rotation style. So by default, all sprites are set to all around. If we don't want it to flip around all crazily, we can go ahead and set it to left and right and put that right here. So what's happening is when the flag is clicked, we start at our position and then we set the rotation style to left and right. That happens whenever we click the flag. So now if we test this out, we'll notice that it's not flipping over crazy like it was before. The next thing we want to do is add a little cool thing. So Let's press our flag, and if we go to the left, you'll notice that, you know, we just stop moving. There's a limit for our character or player to move. So, if we want for when our player reaches this point and them to appear right here, we can go ahead and change its X and Y position. And we're going to do this using operators. So, let me grab a when flag is clicked. We're going to create another one and then go into control and grab a forever loop. Then we're going to grab two separate if statements. And like I, um, let me re um, explain the if. So the if is just if this condition takes place, we'll do whatever is under this. So in this case, we can grab an operator and say if, and then grab a greater than, and then grab a less than. And then we'll go into motion and go here. So what we're going to do is say if our 
x position is greater than now let's look how much we want our x position to be i think 250 is good so if it's greater than 250 then we're gonna set the x to negative 250 and then we're gonna do that for the other position we're gonna say if x is less than negative 250 then we're going to set the x to 250. now if we click on the flag and test that we'll notice that it works smooth and if we can we can do the same and if we want we can go ahead and do this so that's pretty cool now the next thing we want to work on is the costumes and the animations so let's go to our costume and let's instead of renaming this to costume one we can go ahead and rename this into something a little bit more readable so we're gonna have this be walk two or they should be actually swim um you can go ahead and probably swim will probably be better i'm just gonna use walk walk three walk four walk five and we have walk six okay so now we have all our animations renamed now we want our our animations to loop whenever we're moving the the player so to do that we're going to create another when flag is clicked and something i will explain is if you do want you can have everything under the same flag this right here is possible and i'm going to go ahead and do that but for what for the animation there's a reason why you'd prefer it to be under a different um thing and i'll show you right now so when flag is clicked we want to forever again grab another forever loop and grab two if statements then we're going to go ahead and actually just duplicate this to duplicate something you just right click on it and press duplicate again um then we're going to say then we're going to switch the costume so caught anything related to costume or looks is found in the looks tab so then we say we're going to switch our costume and then go to operators and we're going to say switch costume to costume number plus one then we'll duplicate this but since when we're going d um actually no a is left so we're gonna go ahead and remove this and grab a negative i mean minus operator you could use a plus operator as well and say negative one that is also an option so now if we click the flag we're swimming now for some people you probably think this is a bit too fast some people think this is perfect if you do think it's too fast a, a great thing to use is the weight block so what this weight block does is just waits um whatever seconds we put we're gonna put 0 0.05 and we'll notice a difference so a you notice this is a lot more smoother but if we go right this is crazy fast so we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this and bring it down here now if we click a it swims it swims very nicely now we have an animated um octopus in our game now the reason why i said you probably don't want all of this in the same block is if i go ahead and drag this and we click the flag you notice it's still it's still fine it's just a lot slower it's not moving as fast as, as you'd want to and if you did want to fix that problem you could probably increase the move steps but the reason why i say that is i'm um, say it's best not to have a wait seconds in the same block um same when flag and forever block clicked um whenever forever block um is that what we're doing is we're, um code goes in steps so we're going to go through this code right here where my mouse is then we're going to set rotation style and I'm going to skip a bit of it, but basically we're going to say if key A is pressed and we do press the A key, we're going to point in direction negative 90, move three steps. Now, in this case, we didn't press the key, so we skip this. We're not past the position. We're not past this. And then we get here. We switch the costume to this, and then we wait 0 0.5 seconds before we go through the loop again. So it's better to have this be its own thing so it just loops and waits in its own separate loop and this is not disturbed by that um the next thing we have to go over is 
trash. So we're gonna add some trash into our game. Um, basically, this is going to be the the enemy of sorts or the obstacle that our player has to dodge. But before we go into that, let's add a backdrop. So if we go right here, we're not gonna. If you do have a pre um found backdrop, you can go ahead and upload. But I'm gonna choose one of the pre made scratch ones. And what um and what Scratch does, it does a pretty good job of having you have some basic um things you can use. In this case, you can use Underwater 2 or Underwater 1, which I'm going to use. And now just like that, we have a backdrop um for our player to walk around in. Okay, so now we need to add some trash. So we're going to upload another sprite and we're going to upload this recycle bins. So as you see, they're in one single sprite, just like the previous one. And this is where I'd recommend that you probably don't want to choose every single one of these. Probably just choose two or three of your favorite ones and roll with that. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with this newsletter. Even though I'm pretty sure if we're underwater, technically speaking, it should not look as good as this. But... It's a video game. Not everything is grounded in logic. Um, so we can go ahead and grab a this can right here. Pretty polluted. Pretty polluting if I won't say so myself. Um, grab this. And then we're also going to grab one more thing. And it's going to be this bottle here. Now, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and separate all the other ones. Um, yeah, go ahead and do all of them if you want to. Um, it will it will add a lot more variety to the to the game if you do do that. So I do actually recommend that you go ahead and do that. But anyway, change its size to one twenty, and we're gonna call this trash. I'm gonna go ahead and rename the sprite to capital O, so Octo Player, and then we also have trash. So now we have our three costumes of trash that's going to come from the sky and hit our dear player. 120 is, yeah, pretty good size. Next, we're going to say um, one flag is clicked. We're going to hide it. Now you might be like, why would you hide this? Well, because Scratch has something very useful that allows... Um, you to have just one sprite, but multiple versions of that sprite. And I'll explain a bit later. I'll explain a bit later. Um, but first, we're going to go ahead and set its Y position to... Um, actually, I have to show it for this. Um, let's see. Yeah, 180. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make its Y 180. And then forever, we're going to wait. Now, another useful thing that Scratch has is if we go to our operators, we can use random variables. So, not random variables, random op, um, numbers. So here we can say wait 0.1 seconds to 0.5 seconds. So it's going to wait a random amount of time. And then we're going to use Scratch's very, very useful thing called clones. So we're going to create clones of the trash and we're going to have them spawn around the top. So we're going to say create clone of myself. And then we're going to have to say what happens when I start as a clone. So when we start as a clone, we're going to switch um, our costume to any one random one. And we're also going to set the X. Okay. So we're going to set our X um, in operators. We're going to set our X to negative 230 to 230 and then we're going to switch our costume um here we have our costume numbers one two and three so we're going to set it to a random one between one and three if you have more than just three if you selected more like 10 you should sex um, pick random one to 10 if you only selected one then you don't even need to go through this step next we're going to say forever um, in this forever loop, we're going to change, we're going to change the Y, where's the Y, we're gonna, oh, that's in motion, and we're going to change the Y by negative 6, 
So what this basically means is that we're going to go down, right? And another cool thing we could do for more variation is we're going to have it point in direction and make this random as well. So if you notice here, um, okay, we have zero to, so we have negative, negative, okay, 180, okay, so negative 180 to 180, basically. Okay, so the, so this isn't, this is negative 180 to 180, and we don't want it to be forever, we just want it to be in the beginning, and then we're going to show we're going to show the clone but we're not going to show the original object so now we see we have some trash falling in the in, in the ground and yeah we have something to dodge um and okay 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 so this trash is piling up on the ground and we just kind of have to you know dodge it um next what we can do the next thing we can do is say when i start as clone we can wait so we have a wait until block as well and we're going to say wait until touching the edge because as we noticed there are things stacking up on the ground and eventually once we get to like well if we get a good player that somehow manages to dodge a thousand of them and there's just a thousand clones that can slow down our game so we do want our things to disappear eventually so we say wait until touching edge then we're, then we're going to um simply delete this clone so now what do you notice they're not spawning anymore that's because what the edge is in scratch is this 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 and this and if we remember whenever we spawn something it spawns at the edge so what we'd want to do to fix the solution is wait two seconds or actually just one second is good we wait one second and then it only looks wait until touching the edge after that second has passed now that fixed our problem so the next thing we need is something that's you know very important and crucial in many games and that's a score counter so to do that we can go into variables and create a brand new variable. We're going to create that in our... Actually, it doesn't matter where we create it. We're just going to create, make a variable, and it's going to be for all sprites. And we're going to call this variable score. Okay. So now we can go ahead and, yeah, put this. If you right-click on it, you can make it a large readout. Um, you don't want to make it a slider, but... Um, yeah, we're just going to change it to normal readout. And what we're going to say is when flag is clicked at the beginning at a brand new game, we're going to set the score to zero. Um, and then we're going to change the score by one whenever it hits the ground. So now if we click the flag, we can go ahead and dodge these and our score is going up by dodging it. But it doesn't matter if it hits us because that also we haven't added that into the game. So what we have to do is in our Octo player, um, we can just say if and if we go into our sensing, there's a block called touching again. And instead of using the edge, we're going to say if touching trash, then we're going to go into control and stop all. That should stop the game if we touch a trash. So now we can get a bit of score and then get hit. Our, our game ends and our score is four that's it for this video thank you very much for watching till the end i hope that you enjoyed it if you did like it please smash that like button and make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss the next video and i'll see you in the next one peace